Hello there. In this video, I want to calculate the moment of inertia of a solid uniform cone of mass m, right? It's going to have some height h, some radius r. Actually, I'll call this uh, I'll call this capital R. Yeah, I think that'll be neater if we call that capital R. Um, and it has an axis of rotation that's passing straight through the tip of the cone, right, which is the, uh, the z-axis here. So in order to calculate this moment of inertia, just like with, uh, you know, the sphere, uh, which I did the moment of inertia with both methods before, right, I really have two options in calculating this moment of inertia. One, I can kind of break this cone down into a bunch of, like, little infinitesimal like point mass type of mass units right and use the definition of moment of inertia and sum together right sum together all of those little infinitesimal like point mass type units we would have to define our coordinate system you know maybe we'd use uh like cylindrical coordinates uh, but we would have to you know parameterize out this cone and then conduct some kind of uh, volume integral that seems like a lot of work. The other option, oh, the other option is that I could build this cone up with a simpler shape, which I know the moment of inertia of. This seems really promising, right? Because I can imagine that this cone is built up of a bunch of little disks, right? A bunch of little infinitesimal disks which I know have a moment of inertia of one half mr squared, right? And I could imagine stacking up a bunch of these disks to build this cone. So that's probably going to be the much easier method, right? Because that's only going to result in a, uh, a single integral. And we'll see how that, uh, that comes about. So let's go ahead and jump right in with, uh, with that method. So I'm going to go ahead and show one of these infinitesimal disks here. And Let's go ahead and define, let's define the radii of one of these disks. We know that it's going to be some function of height up and down the cone. But for right now, let's go ahead and call this radius little r. Awesome. And we know that this disk is going to have its own little mass, which I'm going to call dm, little infinitesimal mass. It's going to have its own little infinitesimal volume that it occupies dv. And it's going to have some infinitesimal moment of inertia di. Right? We also know, because just like in the sphere video, we know in advance now that this little radius r is going to be some function of the height z. So let's go ahead and note that now, that this little disk is located at some height z, it's also going to have a thickness dz, right? That's just the, uh, the thickness of this little disk here, right? And so we know that the moment of inertia of my cone, I can think of as just the infinite summation of all of these little, uh, disk moment of inertias, right? Each of these little disks has some moment of inertia di. If I sum together all of those uh, di's, that's going to give me the moment of inertia of the cone. Okay, so that infinite summation of di, well, that's an integral of each of those di's over, we'll say, the cone for now. We'll think about the exact boundaries later on. So we just need to sum up all the little di's from the bottom of the cone to the top of the cone. Great. So now, what are each of these, uh, these di elements going to be? Well, if we note, let's go ahead and note that the moment of inertia of a disk, i of disk, is equal to, very generally, 1 half times the radius of the disk squared times the mass of the disk m right and i've written this m on the outside kind of suggestively so that when we plug in so for an infinitesimal disk for one of these this is going to be equal to 
one half, one half times little r squared, right? It has now a radius of little r times dm, right? Little infinitesimal mass dm. So this is equal to di. Cool. Now, what's dm going to be equal to? Well, we know that dm, we've done this over and over again, is going to be equal to rho, where rho is my volume mass density, which is going to be a constant, times dv. Sure, we might as well up front uh, internalize what this uh, mass density is going to be exactly, right? We'll substitute this in later on. If my cone has a uniform, or if my cone has a mass of capital M, there it is, mass of capital M, just take your mass, divide by the volume of your cone. What's the volume of a cone? One third times pi r squared times the height of the cone h. Cool. There we go. There's my mass density. And let's just be, let's make this really neat and write this as 3m over pi r squared h. Beautiful. Now it's in a very nice form. Cool. And we can substitute that later on. But for right now, let's just, you know, let's leave rho how it is. Okay, well, next, again, so we started with what's an infinitesimal moment of inertia. We wrote it in terms of dm. We wrote dm in terms of dv. Now, what's an infinitesimal volume element, right, that each of these disks occupy? Well, again, that's really easy, right? Each of these disks is going to have some area right? It's like a cylinder, right? So they each have an area and then a height of dz. So if we just multiply that area by the height, that gives us the volume. So what's this little area? Well, this is just pi times r squared, right? And so if my height is dz, we just multiply that. And there we go. This, this is going to be the volume of one of these little infinitesimal disks or infinitesimal cylinders, right? So this is equal to dv. Awesome, that's, that's also really nice and easy. So here we go. So dv is equal to pi r squared dz. Okay, awesome. Let's put this all back together. Right, so now di, let's kind of use this as one final statement. di is equal to one half r squared times dm, which is rho times dv, and dv is pi r squared dz. Wow. So let's go ahead and simplify this down. So this is going to be one half times rho, times pi, times r to the fourth, times dz. Kind of see that process now very clearly of starting with one infinitesimal unit and then breaking it down and kind of writing this in terms of a variable that we're actually going to realistically be able to integrate with respect to? That's all that we're doing. So the moment of inertia of my cone is going to be equal to the integral of di, which is this quantity, but we're far from done, right? Because I, uh, I still have this little r, and we know implicitly, we know implicitly that this little radius r is going to somehow be dependent on the height that my disk is up and down this cone, right? The further down it is, the wider this disk is going to be. The further up it is, the narrow it's going to be. 
right? But now we need to actually come up with that function. How is r dependent on z? Because once we have that, we can just integrate with respect to z and then we're effectively done. So let's go ahead and figure that out. And if I just project down this little radius r onto the, uh, onto the xy plane, so let's go ahead and just, I'm just projecting this down. Right, and now I'm gonna connect these points together just like this. And I'm going to connect in blue the lines for my radius capital R and H together. And let me just kind of move, move these terms in the picture around just so we can be absolutely clear on this just so it's really nice and easy to see so my mass unit was located at some height z had some radius little r and then this triangle had some height or this sorry this cone had some height h and some radius capital r right hold on isn't this green triangle here and the blue triangle that it's overlaid over on, these are similar triangles, right? Or in other words, the ratio, the ratio of z over little r is going to be equal to the ratio of little h over capital R. We can see that these lines here are parallel right and they share the same angle and this little triangle is just like a scaled down version of this uh of this blue big triangle right so these are similar triangles and so just like that i can very easily write out that little r is going to be equal to capital r over h times z that's exactly what I wanted, right? I have r as a function of little z. So this little r here is going to be capital R over h times z. Sweet. Let's take all of our constants out of the integral. So, so I'm going to have pi times rho over 2 times remember we're raising little r to the fourth so i'm going to get capital r to the fourth over h to the fourth all right i dealt with my constants and now we need to integrate z to the fourth dz and what are the boundaries of this integral the boundaries right my height is going to start at z equals zero at the base of the cone. And we're going to move all the way to the top of the cone where z is equal to h. OK, so that's really nice and easy as well. So we go from the bottom of the cone, z equals zero, to z equals h. Cool. And now all we got to do is evaluate this integral. Well. This is very simply going to be one fifth, or here, let me write out my constants first. Right, and so we're gonna get with this integral one fifth z to the fifth evaluated from zero to h. And of course we know, we know that that's very uh, simply going to be equal to one fifth times h to the fifth awesome so if we're here right if we're here let's go ahead and first cancel out the h's cool the last thing that i said we were going to wait on and do at the very end now we just got to substitute a uh, row in right i have this quantity for row so let's go ahead and just substitute that right in for row 
and let's go ahead and write out our terms. So we have 3m over pi r squared h times pi r to the fourth over 2 times 1 fifth h. All I did, I just substituted for rho. All right, let's get to work canceling. Cancel, 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 cancel. Would you look at that? What a beautiful result. There's not even a dependence on h anymore, right? We're going to be left with the moment of inertia of my cone is going to be equal to 3 over 10 times m times capital R squared. Fantastic.